Hello everyone and welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna be looking at another way to place cavities in your PCB. And you can do this using the footprint tools in Altium Designer. Now, if you've been paying attention to some of our recent videos, we have been playing around with footprints, going over what's in the different layers and what you can do with footprints that then gets reflected into the PCB layout. So what we're gonna do is show you a way that you can define cavities in your PCB footprint. This is an alternative to the workflow that we showed in an earlier video. Make sure to check the link in the description to watch that other video. And as soon as you've watched that, make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along with this workflow. Let's get started. So in our earlier discussion of cavities in a PCB, we showed how to do this using mechanical layers in your PCB layout. So the way that is typically done in a lot of CAD tools and the way you can do it in Altium Designer is you can create this cavity layer that you can see here in the view configuration panel. And then when you place the cavity outline, you can define it as a rectangle. Um, obviously you wanna put a fillet or put manual arcs on the corners, set the track width to zero, and then set your fillet size to match your tool radius. Now, once you've done this, you've basically defined a cavity outline that you're going to use in your PCB layout. Then what you would do is two things. First, you would define in your fabrication notes exactly how many layers that cavity needs to span. So you need to basically define a layer pair. And then you would need to use polygon cutouts or keepouts in that cavity region in order to clear out the copper from that cavity region. So that's the way to do it manually using mechanical layers. And that workflow works just fine, especially if you're just going to be putting solid copper or have an open cavity region that spans internal layers in your PCB. Now there's another way to place cavities into your PCB layout that doesn't require you to manually draw out the cavity outlines and then manually place keepouts or polygon cutouts in order to clear out the copper from the region where you don't want it. The way you can actually do this is to use your PCB footprints. So to do this, you would need to then define a specific region in your PCB footprint. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how to do this using the footprint for this NRF52 MCU. I have in the window pulled up the PCB library for this project. And here I have the BGA footprint for that NRF52 MCU. Now you can see here that there's this curved purple outline along the edge of this component surrounding the courtyard layer. So this is my cavity layer. This cavity is a mechanical layer, and it's actually a region, it's not a layer, but it appears on a mechanical layer. And the way to place this cavity region is pretty simple. Basically, you just draw out a cavity outline that you want. Again, make sure to use a fillet, and you wanna use a fillet so that you can set the mill tool size or the routing tool size around those corners. And then once you've created this, you need to convert this into a region. So we're gonna use a region object to define the cavity outline. Once you've created that region, you can then take that region and up here in the properties panel, you see there's a drop down for kind. Right here under kind, we have an option for cavity and that's what we wanna use. So that defines our cavity region for this component. Now we wanna define this on a mechanical layer. So here I've just used mechanical five and that's the same layer that I've used for this larger cutout that's gonna define the cavity for this component. So that's basically what we need to define a cavity. Now, if we were to just do this workflow and then put this component into the PCB layout, what would it look like? So let's go ahead and do that experiment. So to do that, I just need to use the place button and then it's gonna go over to my PCB layout. And I'm just gonna place it here. So you can see there's some DRCs that appear, but that's fine. I'm just gonna place it here just for purposes of this demo. So now after I place this MCU on this top layer, you can see here that the layer assignment is top, but I have the option to assign this to an internal layer. So let's assign this to layer three, just for fun. So now I have that component placed on layer three. And if I put this PCB into 3D and do a little bit of a rotation here, you can actually see that the solder balls for this component do actually appear on layer three. So let me get my zoom correct here. 
but you can see where those solder balls come down and then appear on layer three. And then in 2D, you can see that we actually have our pads on layer three. So we now have this defined explicitly as a component that lives on layer three. That's where it will mount. And so now we have our cavity region to define the extent to where any other objects can exist in the PCB layout. What happens now if we were to, let's say, repour the polygons around this component? So if I put this in single layer mode and just look at layer three, you can see here that the polygon pour clears out around these pads just as you would expect. So these pads were placed without any net assignment. And so of course the polygon clearance rule is going to enforce a clearance around all of these pads, just like you see here. But what happens here on the top layer? So I report the polygon, but on the top layer, you can see that the polygon pours over the region where the component exists. So take a look again in 3D. There should be some polygon clearance around this component. But if you look in 2D, you can see that the polygon pour overlaps the component. So what have we done wrong? Well, the issue here is that you need to define a height or a thickness for your cavity. So that's the way to make this work correctly and ensure that any polygon pour or any other objects that might overlap with this component are actually cleared out from the PCB layout. So to do that is pretty simple. First, let me just delete this component. We'll go back into the footprint. And then if I select this cavity, you can see here that there's an entry in the properties panel for cavity height. So I'm just gonna set an arbitrary 30 mil cavity height. Now let's go ahead and save this, and then we will place this again. And then after placement, I'm gonna again put this on L3. So now after re-pouring the polygons, you can see here that on the top layer, the polygon pour has now also been cleared out around this cavity. So you can see the cavity outline right here. And if I take this out of single layer mode, you can now see the clearance being enforced around the boundary of the cavity and the polygon pore. So that's exactly what we want when we place a component like this being inset into the PCB. If I just do a little rotation, the cavity outline becomes much more clearly visible. And I can see that the component is actually inset into the board, just like we want in this example. Now to do this in the prior case where we were manually drawing out mechanical layers, we actually needed to manually draw out keep outs or we needed to convert our mechanical outline to a keep out and then place it on the copper layers where we wanted to prevent any pour from occurring. So there are some different advantages to using these different methods. So now that we know about these two ways that we can place cavities in a PCB, which way should we use? Should we use just one of these ways all the time? Well, my view is that they provide different advantages in different situations. So for example, in the instance where you want to place the cavity in the footprint, remember that you have to place this in a specific footprint. So just as an example, this NRF52 MCU, if I were to just use this footprint for all of my NRF52 MCUs, then this cavity would appear in every single footprint. So if I were going to, for example, place this polarized capacitor in an inset cavity, I would actually want to make a copy of this capacitor and then just apply the cavity cutout to the copy and then only place that component as a cavity component. And then I have an identical component that doesn't appear in a cavity. So there's a little bit of extra management that you have to do on the library side if you're going to use cavities in PCB footprints. Now, if you're just going to use a mechanical cavity, maybe it's gonna be an air-filled cavity or it's gonna be a copper-filled cavity or a fully plated on the floor, ceiling, and walls cavity. Well, then in that case, I would say it's better to just draw it out manually because otherwise you're gonna have this basically static cavity type of region that exists in a footprint. And anytime you wanna modify the outline or the size or the layer span, you have to go back into the footprint, update the footprint in your PCB layout, and then make sure those changes import correctly. My view is that there are different reasons to use it. And I personally prefer to use the mechanical layers. It works in any CAD program. However, if you have specific components that you're always going to put into a cavity, you can certainly define that cavity inside of these footprints. 
The last point I want to run over is how to place these components such that they account for the copper orientation in the PCB stackup. So in this example where I placed the component on layer three, I was able to do that from the top side, as you can see here in the 3D view, because in the layer stackup, I'm on layer three, which has top copper orientation. So basically the copper is laminated onto the top side of that internal dielectric. So that's what allows me to then place this component like this. It's because I'm mounting onto copper that is on the top side of a laminate. That gives me my top side orientation for the component. Now, what if I wanted to then, let's say, mount in the other direction, coming from the bottom? Well, then what I would need to do is mount to bottom side orientation copper. So that's what I would do if I wanted to take this component and mount it to, for example, layer four in my PCB stackup. So if I wanted to do that, I would instead move this back to layer one, and then I need to flip the component to the back side. Once I flip this to the back side, I can then take that component and I can inset it into one of the layers in the stack up where I have bottom copper orientation. So in this case, into layer four. Now when I move this into layer four and then re-pour the polygon, you can see here that it actually doesn't put a polygon cutout around this component like it did when we had it on the top layer. Taking a look at this in 3D, we can see very clearly that the component is being inset. And you can see that just from looking at the side view, you can see all the balls are on the BGA package here. But in 2D, we don't have that same polygon cutout. Why is that? Well, if we're going to use a bottom mounted inset cavity in this way, we would then need to go back into the footprint and you need to select the cavity here. And then you need to apply what I've done here, a negative cavity height. So if I take this with a negative cavity height, place it into my PCB, flip it over to the back layer, and then I inset it into layer four, once I re-pour the polygon, you're now gonna see that the polygon clearance applies on that back layer, just like we need it to. So this is very important. If you're going to use a cavity layer in your PCB footprint, for a bottom side mounted component in an inset cavity, you need to define a negative cavity height. That's very important. You saw how it works here. Go ahead and play with it in your PCB layout and you can probably come up with your own workflow and methods for using these different types of cavity methods in your designs. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Hopefully this gives you the tools you need to start playing around with cavity regions in your PCB footprint should you choose to do so. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and of course, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And finally, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.